Hey folks, it's us, podcasting wonderkins John Bishop and Lucas Southworth. Although this is a podcast about cars, it is not age-appropriate for the target demographic of these films, as we usually end up talking about the reproductive organs of Lightning McQueen. Alright, now let's take a look under the hood. According to all known laws of automation, there is no way that a VW Beetle should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The VW Beetle, of course, flies anyway, because VW Beetles don't, don't care. care what humans think is possible. It's possible. Man, that's a blast from my past. Thank you, John, for that lovely little intro bit. Uh, this is the chat. It's the only podcast. Well, Period, but our lawyers have advised us to stop commenting on that and, in their words, stop implicating yourselves, you morons. So suffice it to say that it's the only podcast brave enough to ask the question, hey, what's up with cars? I'm Lucas, and John did that thing earlier. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which is, of course, the intro to the movie B m- movie, uh, which I recognized, I think, on the on according to. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is what he's doing. All John said... I said, do you have an, a specific intro that you want to do? And he said, oh, I've got an intro. <laughs> and he just sort of did it. So that's sort of where I'm at. John, what are we talking about today? You have to say it this time. We are talking, of course, about Disney Pixar's Cars. Back More to you, specific. Lucas. <laughs> Fine. Uh, as you've noticed from what is maybe my favorite episode title I've ever come up with, I'm going to go ahead and say I came up with this one and I'm proud of it. This one is The Birds and the VW Beetles. <laughs> so you may think we're like, you may be thinking, oh man, more talk about car sex, which I don't know, pretty reasonable, but no, we're literally talking about the birds in the movies and the VW Beetles in the movies this time. This time, that's what we're talking about. Now, we're talking about specifically these two because. Of all of the examples of animals within this universe, we find these two to be the most interesting because it seems that any farm animals are just tractors. And uh, these, the birds and the bees, they do not make any sense. They sure don't. Not even like movie to movie, they don't. They're not the same thing. Why would they be? <laughs> you mentioned that, and we can talk about how in the first in the first movie... They have VW Beetles be the bugs, and then in the second movie, they have VW Beetles be people? The VW people, yes, that is one of the two things I was talking about. Also, in Cars 2, there's a scene in Paris in which Mater uh, goes, and he's having a grand old time, and he's driving in front of uh, the Louvre, if you will, (laughs) and he scares off a bunch of pigeons, and they're like just tiny planes but they are have been detailed to look like they have pigeon feathers and they're like tiny motorized planes but then in planes fire and rescue there's just a shot and it's like i don't know five or six second shot so they wanted you to see this and it's a little it's a bird nest and (laughs) you know those styrofoam planes john that have like the rubber band uh or they're probably balsa wood if they've got the rubber band uh the the tiny well the there are some that are just like construction paper that you can just pop out but yes uh those are alive (laughs) those are alive you say yeah now now why do you why do you say that those are alive because again, like I already said, there's like a five or six second scene in which one of them flies up and to his nest in a tree that it made somehow. And there are two baby uh, little rubber band engine planes in that nest. And that, they're just smaller. And that plane then proceeds to vomit into the baby's mouths. John, if the balsa wood plane vomited into its 
tinier balsa wood plain uh, spawns, mounds, this would be a podcast called, hey, why did this happen? Specifically, a lot of stuff happens in the Cars verse, but there's this one scene in Planes, Fire, and Rescue that we're going to talk about only. That's going to be the only thing. And then no one will listen to it because the title is like 30 words long. Or maybe that would drum up interest. What do you think? I think that's a, a wonderful idea. And yes. uh, it's premiering next week. I mean, this was, in fact, a hypothetical. The plane doesn't vomit. If the, Again, the, if the plane vomited, it would be the only thing we talked about at all, ever. Very true. Very true. <laughs> now, for anyone wondering why I sound like this and why I'm generally a little bit slower than I normally am, it's because I just took a nap for about two hours. And I'm so very tired. You sound like you're doing a late night, like sexy radio show, but not in a way that, not 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 good, not in a good way. Oh yeah, <laughs> cut that out. Maybe no. I will literally cut that out. Either but you, not cu- you here's the cut thing. That out. Either you cut it out, or I will in fact go back and cut it out. Future Lucas will in fact do that's, that. That's that's not only fair; it's expected. Yes. So wanted. Please. So these these plane birds, they travel yes. via flapping their wings, correct? No, no, man. They're just planes. But they're you can tell they're birds because one of them has a paint job to make it look like a pigeon. And the other one has a literal nest, a literal bird's nest. <laughs> no, it has a nest. Is there anything yes. uh, pretty much similar for the other planes in these movies? Like the full sentient dusty crop popper planes? Yes. They have homes, I guess, is what would be, or hangers. What I'm pointing out similar thing. is that there are just giant holes in these trees for them to just fly through, as if that's not just an inconvenience. Yeah, they, they do, in fact, cut a hole through, like, a big sequoia or, or a redwood tree. That's weird for planes. Like, it's mm-hmm. kind of, if I'm being honest, it's a little weird that we did it for cars, like, in our universe, that we cut the tunnel through the big tree for the cars. Just go around the big tree. It's a giant, really cool tree, and that can't be good for it. I think it actually died recently, so, like, bad That's job, everyone. Not the most terrifying, driving I, I think a tree, it like, knowing that it's dead. I think it, like, fell down. Oh, boy. That's fair and reasonable. Yeah. So... But with a plane, you can just fly above the tree no yeah it makes much less sense that the plane that they have cut a plane hole through a tree yeah planes pretty famously try to stay away from trees at least in my experience at least at least go around or above instead of through the trees yes well when when i'm playing like a flight simulator usually the plane is very close to the trees because it's the fun thing to do is to crash the plane but not real planes See, when I play flight simulators, I spend most of my time wondering how to get it off of the ground. Pull up, Johnny! But, like, it's so complicated. There are so many buttons, so many things to do. This is gonna be a non-sequitur here, but, I don't know, we're doing an episode about the bugs and the cars first. We probably need them. Uh, did I ever tell you I went to pilot camp when I was, like, in middle school? Like, two or three summers in a row? You did. And do you want to know why I remember this distinctly? Uh, because I bragged about co-piloting a plane, probably, knowing my younger self. Because you mentioned it when we were in a flight-themed book club that combined all of the middle schools that yes. I have no idea how I got into, or why it was flight-themed, or how the books related to flight. I mean, one of them was about a Zeppelin. But one of them was The Witch's Boy, which was That's about Rumpelstiltskin book. tunneling through dirt. Something I would yeah, that, that... say is the opposite of flight. I was going to say, it's it's not very flight oriented. But what I was going to say is, at the stupid pilot's camp, uh, it, was, it wasn't stupid. I treasure those memories. It was really cool. I got to go pilot like a little plane. Uh, but they did like flight simulators. And that was that part was the worst because they made you fly the plane good in it instead of flying it like how I wanted to fly it, which I've already said is crashing it. And I was in middle school 
so like <laughs> they gave me a video game and then it's like they gave me Grand Theft Auto and then we're like, but follow all the traffic laws and stuff and just go to work and then come back. <laughs> it's like they gave you Grand Theft Auto and they said, uh, but don't break any laws, period. You know, the title of the game definitely don't do that. That would be the worst thing to do is to uh, theft auto in a grand scale. Also, since we're doing this, is there like a non-grand theft auto? I think the grand is implies like... an amount of value of yeah. like 2,000 or more. So it's like grand theft colon auto almost. Like the colon's not there, but like grand theft is... It's not theft auto with grand added on. It's grand theft with auto added on. Yes. If that make, did that make sense? Okay. It's this thing where uh, it's theft but it's a higher tier of theft called Grand Theft, and it's specifically for automotives. Cool. That's about cars. You can't get mad about that. And if we Straight had up, that's named about it, cars. If we had named it the other one, then you could, but we didn't, so you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Cars, but not those cars. Cars, but not those cars. Yep. Yep. All right. What a title so that would have been. I really Almost like as that many title. words as my fake podcast. Uh, cars earlier. but not those cars seriously we're talking about disney pixar's cars but like in a gross way that's the full title <laughs> i don't like pinning us down to always talking about in a gross way but we didn't title it that so it doesn't matter you want to do like the actual podcast now <laughs> i was about to suggest that we do that nice you got some stuff to talk about or you want me to talk about some stuff vis-a-vis birds and beetles it's time for a fun fact of the day doesn't sound very fun, man. You got to get that energy up. I know you're in nap mode. <laughs> uh, fun fact of the day, according to CNN.com forward slash 2020 forward slash 02 forward slash 21 forward slash US forward slash B dash sting dash attacked dash California dash TRND forward slash index dot HTML. Are you doing ASMR, please? <laughs> get some energy but i'm going to fall asleep and i'm a member of this podcast a swarm of nearly forty thousand bees attacked police responding to oh no that's the not fun fact oh no <laughs> I was about to say when i heard in the url that took you 10 minutes to read bee swarm i was like this doesn't sound like the good one but i'm also no, gonna is... roast him for being low energy so this is the bad one all right okay attacked police responding to a single bee sting report one person was stung by one bee they called the police the police responded and those police were attacked by forty thousand africanized bees oh gosh that's too many a block full of bees is one of the titles of one of these sections uh seven people were stung in total Oh boy. The first firefighter was stung 17 times. Oh boy. No fun. Don't like that. Very not fun. L less than I expected when you said there were 40,000 bees that attacked them. Still, 17 bee stings is not a small amount. All right, time for a fun fact of the day. Oh, crap, bud. You got. I. <laughs> Please. <laughs> drink, you, um, you're always drinking energy drinks. Drink one. See, that's the problem, Lucas. I'm always drinking energy drinks, so today, when I'm not taking my Adderall correctly, because I don't have enough, and I don't have energy drink, I'm this. That's my secret, Cat. <laughs> I'm always energy drink, but it, it's bad. It's not good. It doesn't help. Oh, the, 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 the truth of that statement is, that's my secret. I'm always nearly asleep. Well, that, that, that could be helpful. I, I would enjoy that. Go ahead, do your fact. One California homeowner noticed a few bees fitting in and out of a small hole at the bottom of a shed two years ago and didn't think much of it. Yada, 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 yada. Insider.com. that was the end of the fact for a sec. <laughs> this man found a 70-pound beehive in his shed housing up to 150,000 bees. Was the hive just his shed? At that point, All of it? I would basically assume so. 70-pound beehive, 
150,000 bees. You are really selling the impressive nature of this fact. But yeah, that, that shed belongs to the bees at that, that point. I'm... That square mile belongs to the bees. And like, don't get me wrong, we gots to save them bees, so I'm happy that there were like a bunch of bees. But man, I'm not going in that shed. No one stung plus lots of bees equals fun fact because good. But also, that man's shed needs to be, I don't know, relocated? Probably just the hive inside of it needs to be loca- relocated. I don't see that happening. I think you gotta just move the whole darn thing. Well, if you get the queen, a lot of times the rest of the bees will just kind of follow. True, but so for 150,000 like bees, you find the one. I yeah, feel like that's gonna be a hard bee, thing John. to do without being murdered. <laughs> it's a bee in a bee stack. Uh, yeah, good facts. Are you done doing your facts? I'm done with my facts. It's time for a question from Liz. Oh, All right. bud. <laughs> but now I <laughs> Just need you... Just front load it. I need you to ask me, hey, Liz, do you have a question about bees or bugs in the Cars universe? And then you will respond as she did to you, or yes. as whomever did to you, whichever of the Liz's did. They're, they're both she. Well, yeah, you got me there. Uh, <laughs> hey, Liz, do you have a question about bees or bugs? They're gross. Uh, well, <laughs> as one of my favorite things to say is, you heard it probably not here first. <laughs> Hot take from Liz. They're gross. Now, is she referring to all bees and bugs or just the ones in the cars first, you would, if you'd have to guess? If I had to guess, it would be all bugs in every plane of existence i'm not a big bug guy myself so like i get it yep yep yeah <laughs> there i like there are look, very few bugs that she can i would say tolerate like i'll look at a picture of a bug and if it's like a cool bug i'll be able to appreciate like oh that's a cool bug but i don't want to be in like the room with a bug this is my room don't be in here mom knock before coming in you know bugs are a strange exception to my general rule oh I have received a. I have received. Coming in hot. A, a hot take from Elizabeth Bishop. A small ant is fine. Okay. That is all. Yeah. She can tolerate cool. small ant. What about like a lot of small ants? Like a bit, like a line of them, like they like to do. What about a coke line of ants? We got a hot take. Also fine. Nice. Hmm. I don't think that's true. I think if there were just ants everywhere on the floor, small or not, she wouldn't be happy. But I'm going to let that one lie. All right. So we've got you want <laughs> bugs, ants, yes. small ants, small ant, fine. Yep. That's what John's wife thinks about bugs. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our new segment, What John's Wife Thinks About Bugs. And uh, <laughs> last message I'm going to read. I can stomp okay. them all while they're in one line. Ah, well, okay. Nice. Well, if she's stomping them, then she's not fine with them. I would not say that but... is toleration. Yeah, that's that's sort of the opposite. John, we have to talk about cars, so I'm going to do it now. All right. I so the want... engine is typically in the front, but in a VW Beetle, the engine has uh, very famously been stored in the back. D- do you have like a implication about the universe based on that in this universe bugs they hearts and they okay now i could get behind that okay thank you john maybe that's why they enjoy the smell of poop so very much yeah they certainly do that like we mentioned last week uh they they are swarming that poop like bugs do in our universe you know the the good old saying where your heart is there your home will be also Oh, because that's where poop is? Is that the and joke? That's where poop is. Okay, so that's that why is they like where the, poop is. That's why they like pee-pee poo-poo. Tips cap Hard to, hitting stuff this week, folks. To number one fan, Faith. What do, What about Faith? Just tipping my hat to her. Pee-pee poo-poo. Does she... Stop. Do, <laughs> does Faith just like saying pee-pee poo-poo? What well, are you saying? She sent, or does she like it when we say pee pee poo poo? She submitted that email that said I had to yes, say pee pee okay, poo poo. Yeah. 
And then I visited yeah. her okay. in Louisville and she said pee pee poo poo when she was talking about how something she thought would be very appealing to me, like a video or something. And I got the impression that she thinks that I just say pee pee poo poo a lot. Hmm. Well, you're not proving her wrong today, so. Well, my point I isn't get... that I don't. My point is that if I do, it's her fault. <laughs> okay, that's sometimes she did this very directly. <laughs> All right, so they like poop. Yes. We know this because one of the more featured times in this entire series, we have seen lots of bugs swarming around a big old statue of poop. Yes. That is all. Okay. (laughs) Cool. If you don't have anything more to say about your poop thing, I'm going to say a thing. Sound good? Is it also about poop? It's not, John. It's very much not. Then that's fair. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so one thing I want to talk about vis-a-vis these tiny bugs is the fact that they have these wings and they're like, you know, bug wings. I would sort of compare them to maybe a dragonfly's wings is the closest analog, I would say. Hmm. And those are fully organic, at least in appearance. Yeah. So that's So they've got, like, outwardly facing organic squishy bits. Hmm. I would say, if not confirming squishy bits, at least confirming bug squishy bits. Which is almost the opposite of our own world, in which bugs are the least squishy in the sense that they've got the exoskeleton. But they do get squished, I would say, more often than people do. Yes, because it's more satisfying to break through chitin. Sure, man. So, what if are, the steel is just chitin? You, you're, you're saying what if th- their shell is like a bug sh- shell? Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes. Okay, sorry. And I'm not saying that about the VW Beatles. I'm saying that about every single character. Yes, we're doing it. We're talking about the theory. Yeah, the John, film honestly, theory. Stop it. <laughs> I, honestly, I was never behind the cars or bugs, but I will say I got sent something this week from not even a listener even (laughs) i don't think he's listened to our podcast (laughs) since like the first several episodes uh but i'm stalling because my phone is just freaking out trying to open this thing here we go uh but it is from our friend tucker uh (laughs) who just knows i do a carps podcast so he sent me a uh tumblr post uh, made originally by user Paleo Fail explained that really kind of lays out the cars or bugs. It, it, it's I don't want to read all of it because it's long, but it sort of says that the 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 room around us bugus, which are the you know the tiny bugs, are not a separate c- species from the cars. But in fact, the car is in like a larva form. Oh, no. Yeah. I th- John, they look the same. <laughs> it's not like... They're also it, it's, so very small. Yes, but you know how bugs don't really look like people? Mm-hmm. In this one, the bugs do look like people, but with wings. All right. That would also explain some of the amount of compassion that Red shows them, but it would not explain any of the amount of compassion anyone else shows these bugs yeah like there's there's some stuff going against it and real quick john's talking about a a short called bugged in which some bugs like bother red the fire truck for a while it's not very exciting i'm also talking about (laughs) cars 3 in which a man is proud of just murdering what you are saying at this point is car babies yeah i'm not and let me t- let me just say before we get fully into it, I'm not certain this w- on this one. I'm not really certain on this one, but I don't know. The bug do look like the people do. I mean, and- it depends on what you mean by look like, because if it's a world in which everyone is cars, then looking like someone else, you could look exactly like someone else, and someone else could compare the two of you and not think you look all that much alike just because these cars are absurd. So perhaps to them, these bugs look, I mean, 
vaguely like them, like uh, how a praying mantis can be said to look like a praying monk or something. That's fair. I do want to say real quick, the post does, in fa- instead of calling them larva, it calls them carva. So man, they are one after my own heart. <laughs> but Now, does this post explain how the tires move? The tires on the bugs? On the cars or bugs? N- no. Then it's what? a failed theory. See, one of my greatest problems with this is that cars have rotation. They have this this torque that is in, built into them. Biologically, you can't really make that happen. You can't make your limbs just turbo spin at an insane uh, rotation. Uh, oh boy, I'm so tired. Uh, you can't make your limbs just spin like crazy. Because that would, you know tear them off of you. So how do the cars drive around if they're not somewhat mechanical? See, I still think that within the the theory of the Carva, uh, they're still at least partially mechanical. Because I I don't think you can get around the cars being at least partially mechanical. I mean, they're cars. They have metal and, like, phones built into them and stuff. Like, And you literally see engines. They open them up and you see inside of them sometimes and there's engines and stuff. Mm-hmm. I I don't know, man. We don't see pregnant cars. We don't really see baby cars. We see child cars. And I, I get what you're saying about them, you know, throwing them purposely into the face of that, that one car uh, from Cars 3. But again, I'm going to refer back to this Tumblr post that I'm basing a large chunk of this episode on. And I think it has a good theory that once they're they fertilize their little weird i don't know car bug eggs they just open up their trunk and like thousands upon thousands of them fly out at a time so maybe it's a thing where they just make so 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 many of them that like that compassion towards them doesn't really exist until they've reached at least like the from like the larva sorry carva form into like their childhood they've lost their wings they've grown up a little bit uh form now lucas are you familiar with slime in D? <laughs> i was really hoping you were just gonna ask are you familiar with slime uh but very vaguely i guess uh Tell me what you want to tell me about slime in D&D. What I'm thinking is that it can be a slime-like creature where they are this gelatinous blob and they're hidden in some dungeon and yada yada yada, babies are just an asexual reproduction of the slime and the slime could just somehow be infected with a techno-organic virus that allows it to seep into cars. And after a certain point, these sentient slimes who infect cars, they, they start producing slime offspring. And these slime offspring, they only are familiar with the form of their most recent ancestors, which is cars. So what they do is they find little bits of metal, and they just take over that metal and warp it to their shape and then bada bing bada boom you got bug cars that are just baby slimes okay and that does sort of work with another point i want to bring up about these uh i'm gonna keep calling them carva because i don't want to say vroom around us buggus because that's nonsense words uh and obviously carva isn't a nonsense word uh but they do at least like a little bit seem to show some signs of sentience to me Mm -hmm. and with slime like your sentience essentially just depends on how long you've been alive and uh, how much you have consumed in your size so that would really lend itself to the bigger bugs or carva are going to be more and more sentient and then the full-size vehicles are just the most sentient Meaning that boats and submarines and giant airships and whatnot, those are some of the most, I don't know, 
awoke powerful? people. Sorry, did you say awoke or woke? Yes. Okay, I'm going to, in my mind, choose that you said woke. Uh, <laughs> I like to think that they're just really, I don't know, socially progressive, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, I do, I think that I said they showed some signs of sentience, and then I didn't say what they were, and I want to do that, so I'm going to go back and do that now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in Mater and the Ghost Light, there's a bug that like flies up to Mater, and then like when Mater doesn't get out of his way, it turns on its turn signal and goes around Mater, which shows some amount of some amount of intelligence. In the short uh, that we mentioned earlier, where the bugs bother Red for a while. He sprays one of them with his hose to try to get it away from him. And then it like falls down and it coughs a lot and looks sad. And like, I know animals can look sad, but it, I don't know. Red then helps it up uh, and it looks grateful to him. And it flies off to get his, its friends and bring them back and say, almost as if to say, look at this cool guy who will help us and be nice. Look at her. Which, again, could be father. a thing an animal does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I don't know. They they seem vaguely sentient. And, like, I, even if they're not baby cars, that's weird that the bugs are maybe sentient. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, like, it's like when you save a spider's life, if you stop someone from smashing it, and then you gingerly take it outside with a piece of paper. Uh, later on, it will bring back an army of its friends to save your life in your greatest time of need. Yeah, you'll be uh, sort of the runt of the litter, uh, and it will uh, write in its web some John. Mm -hmm. And then my (laughs) owner will not chop me to bits. Yes, it's a Charlotte's Web joke. You get it. We all read it when we were children or were in a play of it when we were in high school. John and I I played Lurvy. I was Mr. Arable, who is the dad of Fern. And man, a child drew a picture of me uh, with my axe. Uh, and it was a stick person who was Fern and uh, then like a little uh, Wilbur. And they both look very scared. And I'm holding my axe and I look <laughs> very angry and as if I'm about to murder them on the spot. And I've kept it for years. It's one of my prized possessions <laughs> that that was this child's depiction of me. Well, that was heartwarming and nice. So I don't know if I should follow it up with my little bit tidbit about that show. But I'm going about to About how anyway. you claimed you cuckled me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> throughout the show? <laughs> so, uh, so Mr. Arable and his wife, they were both uh, fair-haired and uh, sapphire-eyed, if you will. What and a weird way both, to say that, but go ahead. <laughs> both of the children, the arable children, had very dark heads of hair and brown eyes. And there was only one other character who really matched the description of these kids, and it was the farmhand Lurvy. Mr. and Mrs. Arable love each other very much. Yes. And that's some nonsense. <laughs> I mean... They can love each other very much and have an open relationship. You're right. That's, it's 2020, okay. Lucas. It wasn't in that play, but whatever. <laughs> we were just very progressive. Yeah. Maybe Mrs. Arable couldn't conceive. This isn't what the podcast is about. Maybe Mr. Arable couldn't conceive. Yeah, that 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 would make more sense, <laughs> given what you're implying. Uh, oh, man, I don't like that. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> You're right. I said a cool, a nice thing. I I talked about how a child gave me a drawing and I've kept it for upwards of 10 years. And you're like, ah, a child's character. A child gave me a drawing when I was a substitute for them. And it was like, it looked like Cone from Bleach, which was like a super, super weird pull for a like second grader. So I don't. I don't know where that came from, but I love it, and I have it in my house. Oh, cool, John. I said mine first, so shut up. (laughs) Yeah, what were we talking about before we talked about our sophomore year production of... No, junior year? Sophomore. Sophomore year. Senior. Senior year? Yeah. Senior year production of Charlotte's Web for a while. 
we were talking, of, of course, about how the planes in these movies that are birds, they sometimes don't have an engine and instead have a rubber band. And that's that's real weird, right? Real quick, I do want to talk about that like a lot, but I do. we were actually talking about that the either way the bugs might be sentient. So even if they're not plain babies, they're throwing sentient beings into that car's face and murdering them mm-hmm. for that bit in Cars 3. Yeah, some and of he the smiles plane, the whole time. He's like, yeah, I did it. I didn't get scared when I murdered these beings. With my eyes wide open. I'm so Oof. proud of how I could stare them in the eye when they died to my face. So that's... That's something. But yeah, some of the... Uh, don't okay i feel like you'll know how exactly do the rubber band make the plane go in our universe oh it you basically just you wind twist it, right you wind it and it creates yeah. enough tension to pull the propeller okay that's what i thought mm-hmm. how how do they rewind their thing how how do they do anything well yeah of course they're made of balsa wood and or like cardboard or styrofoam or construction paper or something but we got to do this one at a time bud (laughs) all right you say that but we have to talk about the fact that there's clearly no room for a squishy bit in these things no yeah they're flat they're flat john yep they're like the good old two-dimensional shapes just taped together in a way that makes them kind of 3d and they got the rubber band and that's how they move i guess and that's guess. all we've got yeah it's weird that this one has like maybe our strongest evidence for squishy bits and now our strongest evidence evidence against squishy bits mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> there's no room oh john there's no room in the inn there's no room they in the inn and everybody's eyes. home yeah yeah they do I'm going to confirm that real quick. I found it earlier. I'm sure it's true. Give me a minute. I need to... It's in the Still I Fly montage. (laughs) It's where I found it earlier. Oh, boy. So while he looks that up, let me take a moment to talk to you about this week's sponsor. Um, A really good hat. I'm excited to hear about it. I bought a hat from a store, and it's a pretty good hat. Uh, You're doing great, man. Keep 10 it out of 10 would recommend you should buy one for yourself. Uh, I can't tell you where to buy it because uh, they're not our sponsor. Our sponsor this week is a really good hat. It's gray. It's a really good hat. Yeah, okay. It has. It, they do have eyes and they blink. So, like, it's not just a painted on circle on the plane, on the little the little plane thing. It's it's a working eye. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. They did this, so we have to talk about it. The <laughs> squishy the bit of the podcast are is in the eyes. Yeah, and again, I'm looking at it here. It looks like the eye is like set a little bit back from the rest of it. Okay. Like, so I guess maybe they just got a flat squishy bit in between. Like a very, very flat, two-dimensional squishy bit. Their organs are flat, I guess. Now, Lucas, you said something interesting there. You think that they have a flat squishy bit. But if they have a flat squishy bit, perhaps everyone has a flat squishy bit. Uh, Okay. Okay. Why would anyone else have it if it wasn't a biological necessity like for this plane, this bird plane? Because evolution. What? That's the opposite. If anything, that evolution is evidence against your thing. The the weird bird plane probably evolved to have a flat, squishy bit because it was, for some reason, evolutionarily uh, advantageous to be flat, I guess, for this bird plane. All right, let's talk about what all these vehicles have. They have a face. Why do they have a face? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's because a face is them. Maybe all of the vehicle, except for the face, is mechanical. And the face is the only part they need. So that's the only part they really developed. Which is why the birds have it. It's why the bees have it. I don't know, man. I I get what you're saying with the face. But, okay, 
you're right that we know they have a tongue, a mouth, and eyes. That's like what, and teeth, although they could be mechanical, they look weird. Mm -hmm. That's all we factually know they have. Mm -hmm. I thought that would take me somewhere. (laughs) When you see a plane or a vehicle in general just get injured, most of the time they'll survive, be fine, but you'll notice that the thing that seems to not take the brunt of it is their face. Maybe that's because that's how they are alive. Maybe it's because visual storytelling and you don't want kids to be horrified by a mangled face. But maybe, just maybe, it's because that's where the organic bit is. And if it had crushed the organic bit, they'd have died. And perhaps that is why Doc had a more severe injury. Because perhaps his squishy bit, his face, was more exposed during his accident. And why lightning is fine so quickly. Because... His face was relatively unscathed after his horrible, horrible evisceration. Yeah, we don't really see Lightning's, like, uh, up-close view of, like, the damage to Lightning. Mm -hmm. And we do see a sort of up-close one on Doc. I don't remember how his face looked, but uh, in my memory, it doesn't look great. So that's not totally unsupported, but... (sighs) If In my they only memory, got he's face. got like one closed eye, so maybe. Yeah, or at least like a squinty eye, mm-hmm. almost as if it's been swollen somehow. Uh, but <laughs> Because that's the only part that can swell. Uh, but, it's, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> if they only got face, where do food go? Because they eat food. Do they have robot stomach? They have mouth. Mouth is stomach. Okay, so you're not necessarily insinuating that uh they don't have other organs you're insinuating that the organs have been compressed to their front area Mm -hmm. i'm saying that these weird organic slime beings only really exist in the face okay real quick so we've seen under the hood right yes but under the hood is where mouth is we have seen when they open inside the inside the hood of Uh, maybe two or three characters and the thing is in those characters a plane and a supervillain the mouth is below the part we saw and the eyes are above so maybe it's this strange connection of like this long l shape okay but you're, you're saying the engine and mechanical bits just covered up where we can they open their mouths a lot in this one it's something i very much don't really like is when they open their mouths very wide Mm -hmm. Like Lightning does when he sticks his big, gross tongue out, famously in the first movie. Yeah. So we know it go back. We know it go back. We sure do. Okay, I'm not sure I'm sold on this one, but you've gotten me to the point where I like, I don't know, I think it's very possible. And I will say, looking at an image of it, the fabulous Hudson Hornet, his eyes weren't like destroyed or anything, but it does seem that he took heavy facial damage. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at... I want you to know that I just Googled the phrase Lightning McQueen tongue, and I really hate that. Mm. Uh, Yeah, but looking at it, all you can see inside his mouth, at least in this one, is just darkness and tongue. So that didn't really tell us anything, but I don't know. I looked at it, and now I'm on an FBI watch list. So that's pretty cool. Oh, you wish it were the FBI. I don't know what you're implying, but I don't really want to know what you're implying, John. It's an organization well above their purview. I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, listen, I asked last week for you all to send in names for the wiki quotes, and then none of you did. I'm like, I get that. You're not beholden to us in any way, but it'd be cool if you did. Uh, quote of the day. Give me that, uh, social pressure of the day. Okay, uh, this one doesn't relate to the episode at all. I already warned John about this. It's just a thing I found that I think is very funny. This time we are on DisneyPlanes.Fandom.com. Don't go over to the Planes Wiki very often. Uh, slash F slash P. I'm, I'm going to read the rest of it. I just want you to know that I, I have to because I've committed to doing this in all of the previous times. Mm-hmm. So it's slash F slash P slash one nine eight two seven three two one three three four six six one two five five seven six. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Oh yeah, you know it. Cool. Uh, this is a discussion post on the Plains Wiki 
posted in 628 2013 in general discussion by the Bam Bam Studios uh, titled Meeting. And the text of it says, On July 1st, 2013, we will all have a meeting in the chat. This is not mandatory, but I do recommend you attending this meeting. That is all for now. And, and then the results were... Well, the only person who commented on it was the Bam Bam Studios. But honestly, I don't know where what chat they're talking about. I don't know how to find the results of this meeting. Gosh, I wish I did. But uh, he does come back and comment the same day. The meeting will be at 1 p.m. And then... Almost a month later, on the same post, he just commented uh, on uh, July 18th this time, on exactly August 15th, 2013, which is not how the phrase on exactly or at exactly, that's a full day, uh, Mm -hmm. on exactly August 15th, 2013, we will have a meeting in the chat discussing the movie Planes and what we should expect in the sequel. (laughs) The time will be 12.30pm. Nice. Yeah. I just like that he had to specify that they will be discussing the movie Planes in his post in the Planes Wiki discussion tab, as if anyone else who found this would not know what they're going to be talking about. I mean, of course they're talking about Planes and Planes Fire and Rescue and what they should expect about Planes Fire and Rescue. But what I'm hoping is maybe they're talking about Planes 3, Electric B. Not your best work, bud. Uh... (laughs) But this one was posted, but it was posted in 2013 and Planes Fire and Rescue came out in 2014. So they are, in fact, talking about Planes Fire and Rescue. Yeah, that was a fast turnaround for those two movies. They came out like within a year of each other, I believe. Oh, you can't tell. You can. They're bad movies. Uh... Well, that's the weird thing is the first one is significantly worse than the second one, which tells me that they had enough time to make a decent movie. And instead, they made two movies. Yeah. And speaking of Planes 3, I'm just over in the discussion thread now. Livy B-Girl on May 10th, 2016, did do a post called, Is Planes 3 happening or not? Am I the only one who feels annoyed that there have been no updates or any new new on Planes 3 whatsoever? (laughs) Not only do we not know what's going to happen or when it will happen, but we don't even know if it will happen. For sure, the tension is killing me. So the fans are all riled up. There are two comments on it. I'm going to check them real, real fast. No, Amy50632 uh, does comment, sad it's not being made. Frowny face. I can, but, I can I go know. ahead and update all of the fans. It is, in fact, not happening. Oh, yeah. Disney Toon Studios is dead. So that's probably the big thing about and, it. And we of the Kachat fame are going to put our foot down and say no more planes. Please, you can't. That's right, Disney. This is we have issued a challenge to your authority and power. No more planes. And I mean, if you make it, we're gonna watch it, obviously. More than but once. Please don't make us do that. John has sent me a picture of Lightning McQueen, and it does say Little Wayne under it. Can you explain where you found this or why you sent it to I understand why you sent it to me, obviously. But can you explain how you stumbled upon this image? Well, I will say that you said you looked up Lightning McQueen tongue, and I got curious. So I looked up Lightning McQueen tongue and scrolled down much further than anyone should. And I just found an image that says Lil Wayne, and it's just a picture of Lightning McQueen, and that is all. Oh, man. I really like this image. Thank you for sending it to me. What's my Twitter header? I'm going (laughs) to... Could that use updating? It really could, because this is the best. Uh, it's my picture of Mitch McConnell photoshopped onto a turtle. Oh, that's no. That's pretty good. That's a classic. Yeah. I'm going to download it and then keep keep sitting on it. Maybe maybe consider it. If you follow my personal Twitter, we recorded this on Friday. Go check. See if, see if I changed my Twitter header. To this image of Lightning McQueen with the bottom text saying Little Wayne. It's a little play along at home, interactive bit. And Lucas, I hope the fans yeah. never see this one, and I apologize in advance. Okay, let's see. I'm, uh, okay. Oh yeah, I think I've actually seen this one. 
I don't like it. It's Lightning McQueen. It's a centaur, but the front half is Lightning McQueen. That one's not going on my Twitter header. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, so I had a conversation okay. with some family members today about how the legs of a horse are actually fingers. And then yep. I was like talking about how everyone gets all bothered by the fact that the head of a horse on a centaur is replaced with the upper body of a human and that that's ridiculous. And then I said, well, if it were a little bit more accurate, perhaps it would just be a person, a complete person, except for one of their hands is replaced with the entirety of a horse except for its head. Just one of their hands or both of their hands are full horses? I mean, that's a double centaur. Okay, huh. I guess I'm doing some... Yeah, you could ride your horse. Yep, you just, like, turn your hand around and sit on it. Yeah, I'm doing some, like, science right now, and yeah, that would work. Well, no, uh, it, it, no, no part of it would work, obviously. Horses weigh like 2,000 pounds. <laughs> but I'm going to Google how much a horse weighs real quick. I'm going to guess about 900 to uh, 1,200 pounds. This says 840 to 2,200 pounds. So oh boy. we can all be right today. I was in there. Yeah. I guess I just underestimated cool. how big a horse can get. Horses are very big. I wouldn't want one to be my hand. Okay, John is taken to just sending me random memes. This one doesn't have anything to do with cars. This one's just telekinesis and telekinephews, which I will say, it's a good joke. It's a solid me- It's a solid meme. It's, but... it's like one of my favorite dumb jokes. A woman is giving birth to twins, and during the labor she passes out. And then she wakes up to find that because she was unconscious, her children were named by her brother. And she asks, hey, what'd you name my kids? Hey, uh, come on, what'd, what'd you name them? And then he's like getting shy. He doesn't want to say, he's like, okay, wait, wait, what did I you got name it. my daughter? I got, I got it, John. I named your daughter Denise. And then she's like, oh, well, that's not bad. What about my son? And he says, oh, the nephew. <laughs> of course. Yeah. The nephew. Yes. I probably wouldn't have got it had we not just done a joke with the exact same setup and punchline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm still a little bit proud of myself. John, I want to say one more thing about Pigeons. one more thing about the cars. First. Pigeons yes. and birds. Do you think that they're terrified that birds are just going to poop on them? Or I don't know. He's like, do you think that's a thing in this universe? Okay, we do. Okay, you're right that we do, in fact, know. We've established heavily in the past episode or two that they do poop. So you've got me dead to rights there that the the bird pigeon planes probably poop on the people. Mm-hmm. The people plane cars. It's not necessarily what I wanted to talk about with the pigeons, but I mean, it's where we are. So yeah, I think the pigeons probably, the, the bird plane pigeons probably poop on the bird, the not bird people cars. One propeller, two wings, flying purple pigeon people pooper that's all anyway (laughs) uh so they they poop on people and that's 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 the that's the business we know they poop we know that these rubber band planes exist how Mm -hmm. do those two things coexist how how do the rubber band planes poop well as we pointed out there's no room for like a stomach and there's no room for a sphincter and When I say sphincter, I'm not talking about just a muscle that can contract. I'm talking about the butthole for all of you who needed me to say it because you're particular. Uh, so we don't have the butthole. Um, we don't know how they would poop. And we don't know how they would propel forward. And we don't know how they would eat. So I have to assume that all of their organs that are needed for all of those things are somehow the rubber band. Okay. Huh. I don't know how. But man, I don't know how the bird the bird plane does anything. So it's as good as guess as any man. So you know how sharks need to constantly be like swimming forward so that their heart will pump? Yes. It's that, but with rubber band. Yeah, I was thinking like if the rubber band stops. Oh yeah, I mentioned it earlier and then you said how do they do anything and we never came back to my point. Uh how do they how do they get the rubber band back? And I don't think I think you're right. I think they may just have to be always winding. Mm-hmm. Or if it's like a muscle, they could just like 
constrict it? Nah, Lucas, it's not a muscle. It's every muscle in their body. Yeah, it's all of them. And what what muscles do is you send an electrical signal to them and it causes them to react by expanding and contracting, which is essentially what a rubber band does, except there's no electrical signal. So all it is is you introduce electrical signal to it and you can cause it to contract. And it's as simple as that. Bada bing, bada boom. You got a poop and plane on your hands. Clearly, don't you see from point A to point B how we got there? Uh, but yeah, Shock sure. A rubber band, bird poop. Uh, the one last thing I want to talk about vis a vis these tiny, terrible bird planes. Like I mentioned, the uh, the pigeon planes have a paint job that looks like a pigeon, and like they have like little feathers painted on them, and like their their uh, their wheels where their like landing gear is painted like pigeon feet. How do they know what pigeons look like? Are they evolved from pigeons? Same way they know We're what bears to... look like. Yeah, I know, but how do they know what bears look like? They're mythical creatures. Why did they paint these tiny bird animals to look like pigeons? Or is this just how they naturally are? It's just how they naturally are. They they looked at the beautiful nature, the the wonderful creatures that they found that have these strange symbols just on their skin from birth and they're like we're gonna make myth about these things that are painted onto their skin okay whatever i guess that's all i have to say about the birds and the vw beetles is that all that you have to say about the birds and the vw beetles i think that's all i have to say about the birds and the vw beetles one last thing oh Do you boy think have that... you seen the pictures that tumblr has made of lightning mcqueen and doc that can all ult- john No part of what you just said didn't make it sound like porn. Is it porn? I'm not going to say it's not porn. This image, this one image, is not porn. Is it very clear that porn is on the horizon? Yes. I just want to repeat to you what you said to me. Oh boy, have you seen the images that Tumblr has made of Doc and Lightning? The fact that it's Tumblr just seals the deal, man. That's porn. What are you talking about? They got rid of all of the porn on Tumblr. They did a very bad job of doing that. They just, they realized that that's like 90% of their website. And they decided, you know what? We're just going to censor it. Send me the picture of Lightning and Doc. I want to see it now, I guess. And I I will stress, this is not pornographic. But the tenderness is very palpable. Okay. Oh, they're humans. Oh, God. Oh, Lightning's got a nice little butt. Okay. He's also like five feet tall. Yeah, which I don't think really tracks. Yep. (laughs) Okay. You've got a lot of stuff, kid. As he lovingly embraces him. You've sent me a lot of upsetting images, and I know I literally asked for that last one. But man, I never really like it. (laughs) Well, well, folks, uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Please rate us on iTunes. Please send us your emails. Lend us your ears. And uh, send Lucas all of the images that are definitely not pornographic, but are tender. Please, please don't do that. Tender and loving. But if you want to send me a name for the wiki quote, uh, that'd be really cool. Genuinely, we need them. Uh, So if you (laughs) want to do that at our email, that is... uh, the chat at gmail.com that'd be pretty cool or you can tweet them at us or dm us at uh at the chat on twitter both of those are just one word no hyphen in there or again if you just know us personally just send it our way i don't know man and also Go if you'd it. like to submit a question from liz you better be named liz and even then probably too bad oh, i've been yeah, john got it, man. <laughs> yeah and i'm lucas don't forget to until next time don't forget to float like a cadillac and sting like a VW Beetle. I was gonna say, that's another implication about bugs. But the episode's over, so we can't talk about it. Bye. Bye. Tiny robots are-